What's up guys, it is Jay Beeps here and welcome to another episode of the Leighton Orient Road to Glory. If you did not watch the last episode, there was basically a couple of big transfers that happened as well as some important games we played. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and do so. If you don't, totally okay. And let's get right into this episode. So we are starting things off today, traveling to Vicarage Road to face Watford in the FA Cup. And here is the new and revamped lineup. Vigru is the goalkeeper. Thompson Happ are the outside center backs. Fabris is center back. Gergic and Shibato are the center mids. So Tiru and Brophy are the outside mids. Tavares, Mabimbi are the outside wings. And Cueto is the striker. So let's get into those highlights. And now the delivery. And a goal! Not wasted! Is this the moment? In it goes! In it goes! Can they get in behind them? A goal! He's done! Good movement. Real chance. And there it is! That will... See, I forgot to uh, look at the stats at the end of the game. But regardless, we did lose 4-1. I mean, Watford's a Premier League side. They're obviously going to be better than us. Pretty much expected. But hey, I mean, we still got to the third round. And we were facing a Premier League team. So I still think we did pretty well. So joining us, joining the team from the Youth Academy is Nicholas Orlando. Center, going to be a center mid from Italy. 60 overall. Not the greatest potential. Probably going to end up selling him. Earn some money off of it. Hopefully that works. Same goes for Eulogio Martins, the Portuguese right winger. Again, not good potential. Probably look to sell him this season or next. As well as Chavi Otero. So Logan Shields, a player that I think joined the believe the team believe the joined the team last season, is going out on a short loan to Nagoya Grampus just for the rest of the season. I mean, deadline day deal, just get him out. Hopefully he can come back and be a good backup. So, I, I, I don't really care about the Papa John's trophy. I was just going through simming it. But we did end up getting knocked out in the quarterfinals by a whole city. 2-2 two two, two two during the game, 5-4 to four on the penalties. I mean, it, I mean it's, it really is. It's whatever. I really could care less about this tournament. So, big, big... Big transfer right here. Xavier Dzikonski. Dzikonski. Zykonski. Zykonski, that's how we're going to say it. Zykonski. Polish goalkeeper. I was looking to bring him in at the beginning of all this. Because I, I wanted to have a good goalkeeper and striker. A like good young goalkeeper and striker to worry, not have to worry about for the rest of my save. And just build around the rest of them. But with Mabimbi and Cueto... It was just too good to pass up. So now I'm bringing in this man. 1.55 million. He's 64 overall. I think he has 80 potential. By hope with dynamic potential, he can be the goalkeeper for the rest of eternity. So now going out, going to get some youth scouts. First scout is going to Canada for three months. Give me some defensive minded players. Other scout is going to... The United States gave me some physically strong players for three months. And our final scout's going to Mexico to get us some technically gifted players for three months. I would do six months, but I'm not going to lie. Uh, we're very tight with money after that offer for Zinkowski. So now joining the team is this man, Matia Ferry. Six foot seven defensive mid. The dude is a beast. Like he, he will be a weapon for us. Still trying to work out. I can play him at center mid and just have him be a really big, oversized, defensive, defensively minded center mid. Or am I going to put him at center back and have him just be a good offensive and defensive threat? You know, so it's just, or do I just want to change the team formation a little bit because now we got a good defensive mid? I don't know. Doing a lot of thinking, but I really like this player. As well as Dominico Guerrera, kind of in the same situation. 
good defensive mid. He is a smaller player, so I might end up switching him to a center mid. But, but I mean, regardless, he, he looks like he could be very good as well. Marco Guedes does not look like he's going to be one of those really good players. I mean, I'm just training him right now just to be a support midfielder for our formation if we need a defensive substitute. So Logan Shields was bought out by the team he's on loan with. Don't really care, though. So this season, we just missed out on the promotion playoffs by seven points. I honestly don't think it would have been a good idea for us to try to push for promotion this season. I think we still do need one more season down in League One just to kind of relax, rebuild, get the team back, get the team improving, and then next season, hopefully, is when we can really push for that promotion. So yeah, FA Cup made it to the third round, but Dan, we got knocked out by Watford 4-1. to one. What do you expect? In the Carabao Cup fourth round, we got knocked out by Coventry City. I wasn't playing these games because I don't care about the Carabao Cup either, really. So, but I st we still made it to the fourth round, so. And in the quarterfinals of the Papa John's Trophy, Hull knocked us out on penalties. So, looking at the team, as there's going to be a little bit, I can give you guys what's well, probably going to be a little preview for next episode. Vigaru is likely going to be sold. I mean, Diskonski's coming in. Vigru, I think, is just going to leave. Even though he, along with Sotiru and Tavares, appeared in, I think, every single game this season. I mean, Thompson, Hap, Cueto, and Brophy almost appeared in every game as well. Cueto was our top goal scorer. He scored 28 goals this season. I mean, the, the dude is a beast. Tavares got 16, and Mbimbi got 14. So that's really promising things to see from our front three, who's pretty young and all with pretty high potentials, can maybe turn into the best front three in the world. Tavares led the team with 12 assists, pretty much expected with a player of his quality. Brophy with 8 and Mbimbi with 7. So, But even though Tavares and Cueto's had amazing years, Mbimbi's still our best player. He's 74 overall. Like He is still the best player. I mean, Gurchic... Gergic, who we just brought in, is tied with Cueto for the second best. Shibato is tied with Tavares for the third best. So we have a very good core of players. I mean, Kyran Panu is out on loan. And he's one of our top ten best players. So I, I, I just feel really good about where this team is going. But yeah, Mbimbi is worth $10.5 Tavares and Cueto are both worth, worth $6.5 So I'm not saying I'm going to, but... If there were to be a situation where I would need to dump off a player to bring in a lot of money, I have three brilliant options. But I don't I don't plan on doing that, don't you worry. That is not at all in the cards. So yeah, our manager rating was a little bit low because they wanted us to make like seventeen million off of profit from youth player sales in two years. I've done career modes with Premier League teams where I have that same objective. It's so unrealistic, especially when I need youth players to build my team. So I just think that's something that hopefully they'll fix in FIFA 22. They also wanted us to fight for promotion, which we were we almost did. So yeah, this season, club wanted us to fight for promotion. We didn't exactly get there. They wanted us to reach the round of 32 stage in the FA Cup. Again, pretty lofty expectations. Did not do that. Round Fourth round of the Carabao Cup. And quarterfinals of the Pop John's Trophy, again, did not win Manager of the Year or Manager of the Month. The biggest player that we brought in was Gurkic at 1.9 mil. The biggest player we brought in was Tsanev at 1.5 mil. We played a total of 61 games. We drew 7 of them, which is pretty good considering we lost 25, but we won 29, so it's okay. We scored 88 goals, allowed 73. And looking at our overall managerial resume, one, obviously, we're only, we've only been with the club. This is, We're only going to be with Leighton Orient, likely forever. We did not, this, this must be, we won the league last year. Okay. Did not win any cups yet. Maybe it only counts like, like league, league titles, like the Premier League titles. Biggest win was against Barrow, beat them 7-0. 
biggest loss was to Stevenage, 7 to 4. We've played a total of 115 games, won 54, drew 18, lost 43. We've scored 167 goals while only allowing 141. But yeah, I think that's going to wrap up. Honestly, it was even though we didn't get promoted, it was still it was still good the things that we did. Good transfers, good youth players coming up through the ranks. And it's nice to know that next season with you know a little bit better of a team, promotions like it's legit. Like we could, we could get promoted very easily next year. And honestly, I mean that's the plan. But that is it for me. Uh, I don't think I have anything else left to say except thank you guys for enjoying the series. And it is J Beebs signing off.